Hello friends, welcome to YouTube and in this series we are going to learn about web automation and scrapping with JavaScript using Puppeteer. So what is web automation? So web automation is basically like uh, creating a program which will perform the actions which we usually perform manually. For example, like uh, we used to go to a website, download the images from there or like search for the top 10 images. It is like basically that if you don't have an API for any kind of data to be grabbed then you can use a web scrapping to scrap the data from that website because in web scrapping basically a virtual browser will go to that website so basically it can do pretty much everything which you can do manually so let's learn something about Puppeteer so Puppeteer is basically an open source library provided by a Google which can be run in a Node.js program which allows you to control a Chromium browser virtually which can also run in a headless mode by headless mode I mean like we can run it without the UI component that is useful to run in a service okay so I'm using Visual Studio Code you can try for whatever editor you want but I prefer Visual Studio Code because it is lightweight open source and has a large library of extensions and utilities that makes the development process easier so let's start and open a new folder let's create a new folder here I'll call it JS you can call whatever you want okay so I'll just close the welcome screen okay so first of all we need to install the puppeteer so in order to install the puppeteer you need to open the terminal so in, in order to open the terminal you can just go to terminal and click on new terminal or you can use the keyboard shortcut control backtick so this will open up our terminal so in the terminal first of all we need to install the puppeteer library so you can do it like npm install or you can just call npm i for the shorthand and write puppeteer here so this will take a little bit of time so i'll just fast forward this one so this will also download the chromium browser along with it by default it comes with a chromium browser but you can also use a different browser with this but i'll prefer chromium for now okay so puppeteer is installed and uh, i need a one more library called the nodemon so you can install the nodemon using npm i nodemon so nodemon is a utility that will help you to watch the changes in a file so that whenever we bring the changes in a file it will automatically restart the server you can just install the nodemon using npm i nodemon Okay, so our node mode is installed and uh, now we can just create a new file we can hit ctrl n and uh, we will call this server.js and save the file okay so here's the file so I'll just move this one and uh, as you know like we have installed the node mode so in order to use node mode we can call node mode normal and specify the file name you don't need the file extension so as you can see like whenever I'm hitting a control s it is restarting the server so that we don't need to restart the server after each change okay so let's get started okay so first of all we need to import the puppeteer so we can just import the puppeteer using the require statement Okay, so we have imported the puppeteer so we will just create a asynchronous function because in puppeteer the most of the functions are basically results to a promise so like we know that if we are using a promise so it's a asynchronous programming and uh, if we create a async function then we can use a await keyword in order to execute those lines sequentially so let's create the async function i call it async function scrap and it will just take the url and okay the first thing uh, in order to use the puppeteer we need to create a browser instance so we can just create a browser instance using there's a method in the puppeteer 
procedure dot launch method sorry so in the puppeteer there is a method called puppeteer dot launch this will take this takes some configurations like whether it, as we know that puppeteer can run in a headless mode and without headless mode so it just takes the configurations object to specify like how to launch, launch the browser so you can specify headless to be false so basically it will not run a headless so it will open its user interface and we can see that and if you are running the code in the server so you need you need to put this to true because you know that in server you will not have a ui component so you need to run this property in a headless mode so let's try this thing so i'll also use the await keyword here so that it wait for the launch of the puppeteer so that in the next lines whatever after this will execute only once the browser is launched okay, we have created this scrap function now we need to call this scrap function scrap and it will take a url so i'll just pass it a google url you can see like that it has launched a chromium instance but so far it is doing nothing it has just opened a chromium instance so let's just close this chromium instance and let's open a new page in this browser so we can just call a browser dot new page method in the browser so you can go await browser dot new page so this method will basically open a new tab in that browser so let's restart it and see the result so as you can see that it has opened a new tab in the browser so now we need to go to that url so, so in order to do that you need to call page.goto method which takes in the input url which page wants to load so we will wait for the page to go to that URL so you can call go to and there's a parameter called URL you can just pass this so basically the page will go to that URL as you can see the new tab is opened automatically and now it has gone to google.com so and you can see the google.com so this is how basically you navigate between the different websites so you can just change the URL whatever you want and basically the new instance of your Chromium will be launched and you can just go to google.com so if you see this headless option so if you remove this headless to true which is also by default that like if you remove this thing this configurations option it will open up in a headless mode but since we are debugging so we'll use it a headless to be false so that we can see like whatever is happening in the chrome okay so this is like it next what we want to do is like we want to type some text in this search bar automatically from our program so what we can do is like we need to first of all create a reference of this object as we do it in a javascript that we can uh, somehow create a reference to this object so in order to know the reference to this object we can open the developer tools by right click and go to inspect and then click on inspector and uh, click this input box and here's the input box we can just right click on it copy and we can take it any selector for example this copy selector we can just take this selector this selector will basically create a reference to this this input field and we can do whatever we want with this input field okay i have copied the selector now let's go back to our program here so we can just create input field we can create a new parameter called input field which will be equal in the page object in the page class basically there is a method called dollar which is equivalent to document dot query selector so whatever you pass here will basically be evaluated on the page context that is in the browser so i have copied the selector of input field i'll just paste it here so this is just creating a reference to that input field 
so we also need to use await here because this is just a asynchronous programming so like if you don't use await so the next line will execute before this before the results of this are returned so this is input field and now after getting the input field we can use dot input field dot type method the type method takes the argument like whatever input we want to type for example we can search for covid 19 so this will basically type the covid 19 in that google page let's restart it and let's see the results okay so this is the chromium is getting open okay it go to google.com and oh as you see like the covid 19 is typed in this input box now the next step is basically to enter is basically to press the enter keyword so how can we do this it's quite simple first of all we will have to wait for this input operation to be complete okay so once the text is typed in the input box we need to press the enter so in order to use we can use a wait so in the page object there is a method called keyboard in keyboard there is a press method which will basically press any key so we can just pass it enter to press the enter key on that page and when we'll hit the enter basically our chrome or a chromium will search the results of the query which was typed in previous step So let's see. So the Chrome is open here. Okay, the query is input, and you can see. So as you can see, it has automatically pressed the enter key, and now we can see the search results of a Google. So this was the quick short introduction about the puppeteer. We will learn more about the puppeteer. How can we grab the data from the page? How can we do clicks and event handling on the page i hope you liked the video and if you have any issue regarding the program please feel free to comment and let me know the issue and don't forget to subscribe the channel for more upcoming videos